Alright, alright, hello there everyone, this is Soul Super 17 here, and, uh, let me first, like usual, even though I made this, you know, thumbnail, I don't know, the pictures, not pay video, alright, okay, so, here's the thing, um, I am making this what if, I am just kind of stressed out because of school, so, yeah, I just need to do something to de-stress. So, here we go on this. <laughs> oh, okay, let me just uh, give you an explanation. In the My Hero Academia universe, in this what if, Deku does not exist. But, 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 Jeff, for plot reasons, Becomes Izuku Midoriya. You know, the little kid version. Really, like I said, for plot reasons. An interdimensional being, an interdimensional being, aka the whole entire freaking the life of the My Hero Academia universe, like the galaxy and God in their world, this sense a person, a sense three people coming. Going through the dimensions, and well, it was this world, you know, My Hero Academia is God, and the galaxy and the world itself, the universe, decided to make one of them into Zuko Midoriya, exactly how he looks. So, yeah, that's how, this is that's why technically it's gonna be Jeff transforms into Zuko Midoriya, but then. Well, transforms into Deku, like okay, Zuko Midoriya, and then well, Inko finds him. He gets the name Zuko Midoriya, and then boom. I wanted to make it like this way. I couldn't think of the title. I could just, I could say, what if Jeff became Zuko Midoriya or something? Or what if Jeff was in My Hero Academia? It's, it's just more simple if I just say, what if Deku was Jeff the Killer? Because well, he will be Jeff the Killer. Get it now? Sorry for the confusion for the title. I can redo part one again if you guys don't like how this thing goes. I will make it where Zuku is... Well, well Zuku was Jeff the Killer, basically. He'll become insane. i just rather make it where Jeff is just... Gets amnesia. You know, like he lost his, he loses all his memories. I want to have it like this. See how fun it will be to do for... You know, to make... Uh, not, <laughs> for to make this what if also i want to have fun with this one again this is just one of those what ifs where i just want to have a lot of hilarious moments and a lot of fun <laughs> so yeah anyways let's get into this what if so all right okay so jeff is running through the woods with sally and lazari in his arms as eyeless jack is running right behind him as he goes Run, Jeff, run! As Jeff says, Why do you think I'm doing eyeless? I'm running as fast as I can! As he, as Je eyeless Jeff just says, Well, excuse me! We don't want to be killed by Zalgo. I know Slurman's Man's holding him off of everyone else, but come on! Zalgo has more forces than us! As Jeff just says, No, he doesn't! He goes, Whatever. As you know, they basically run to a... Part of the forest that Slender Man told them to go to. Flashback. As, you know, Slender Man tells Jeff and Isla Shack to go. You know, he says, he basically tells, says Jeff, to Jeff, Jeff, take Sally and Azari and run. And Isla Shack, follow him. Well, no, he says Jack. And follow him. You know, making... Make sure no one will follow him for backup, basically. As I, as Jack says, of course. Where are we going? As basically, Slender Man tells him, I made a, well, a doorway through, dimen through a dimension. Any dimension you so choose, you'll go to. But it's in this certain case, I don't think none of the dimensions that I know of would. Be safe. 
because Zalgo knows them too. As Jeff just says, so what are we going to do, huh? I know he's after Lazari, but come on. Can we just slit his throat already and be done with it? As Jack just says, Jeff, we can't always go for the approach like you do. I know you, you survive against Slender Man. Somehow got impaled and been burned alive and all. And still healed them was basically, well, back up and kicking in just a few hours. But still. He goes, Jack goes, yeah, yeah, fine. <sighs> I don't like that, Jack. <sighs> you know, he's just like getting mad because he wants to go out there and freaking end Zago. For reasons. As Lazari and Sally, you know, are holding him against this, well, jacket. As he basically goes, <sighs> Alright. How long do we have? No, as Cinema just says, Not long, Jeff. Not long, Jeffrey. So run. Run like the devil's after you. As Jeff just laughs. <laughs> the devil. He's out there right, trying to come right into our mansion just to get his daughter back to use her for oh, as a weapon. Tch, that sick jerk doesn't even understand anything. As, well, Slenderman nods. And so, this is where we're, you know, returning back to after a flashback as they finally arrive to the doorway. It's just a simple door with Two trees combined into one that has a door connecting to a boat in between them. As Jeff just says, Oh, well, this is it. You ready, girls? As Sally and Lazari not. And Jeff just says, Isla Shack, he goes, You coming too? As, well, Jack says, Of course. Don't worry. I'll be right behind you. As Jeff figures something out, he goes, This is probably where I'm gonna get pushed into a doorway, and then we get it burns and he just stays here. And so, you know, Jeff opens up the doorway and he just says, Here we go. As Sally and Lazari holds tight onto Jeff, as basically he walks through, and right away, well, right when he was walking through, Jack kicks him, sent him flying into it. As Jeff said, I'm gonna kill you, you eyeless but As then, J Jack closes the door and, well, burns it. He throws, basically, Slenderman, as he had a flashback to where Slenderman hands him a Molotov cocktail and tells him to burn the doorway. Zalgo will have a harder time finding them if he doesn't get his signature on where they are, as he not. So basically, Jack lights the you know the rag that's in the Molotov and throws at the door, burning it. As he's just watching it burn, he hears rustle in the you know the the rustle of the branches and leaves right behind him. As he looks back and he sees Zalgo, as he goes. You, you let my daughter with that smile freak. As Jack just says, yeah, so what? At least he takes care of his daughters, unlike, well, kids, unlike you. As I was just says, I'm gonna enjoy ripping you to shreds, eyeless Jack. As Jack just looks at him and goes like, it doesn't matter, you can't kill me. Not many people can. And Zago just says, I can. And so, Jack... Let's just say Jack learned a few things from Jeff, and he has apples, but he more is up close to person like Jeff with knives. So, he pulls out two of them, and he goes, well, let's dance, ugly. And Zago says, oh, I'm gonna really enjoy ripping you in half. As Zalgo and Jack fight. Well, just want to point this out real quick. He's still going to live. Cinderman comes and basically right when in the middle of the fight, Jeff's about to be, well, not Jeff, Jack's about to be stabbed in the face and killed. 
well, Slender Man grabs Algo by the throat, throws him away, and then just uses, well, his tendrils to basically pierce Zago in his shoulders and in his, one of his sides as it does hit a major organ on him. So he has to retreat. As you know, Slender Man is covered in blood and wounds as he goes, did you? Is, he goes, yeah. <laughs> I, I tried to strap him low enough so that way he would burn all the way. <sighs> I don't know where they went. As Slender Man does say, We'll find out. I'll rebuild it. It didn't take me that long to. <laughs> we need some rest. And, well, to fix up the house first, though. As Jack nods. So, we went over to Jeff, Sally, and Lazari in the portal. As, you know, Jeff says, I am so gonna kick that guy's freaking face in when I see him next time. As Lazari, you know, is holding on to him as, you know, as tired as she can, as so is Sally, as he just thinks of some crap. How am I even getting out of this? Where's the exit? As basically, he's like, you know, how can I say this? He is basically turning around in multiple different directions, because, and then he says, oh, God, I'm feeling I'm gonna puke. Mm. Nope, no, nope, not yet. <laughs> not yet. As then, for some reason, Jeff heard a voice, he goes, as it says, You, you are perfect for this. And he goes, huh? And Zari and Zai goes, what's wrong? He goes, I don't know, but whatever, something's coming, girls. You got up, as then lightning starts to hit, you know, Jeff. Changing his DNA structure along with his features. It's it's basically one of those sci-fi things. Well, not sci-fi. Fantasy sci-fi things that happens. Pretend it's like that. As, you know, Sally and Lazaro sent flying too. As it basically shrinks down Jeff's body and kind of suppresses his memories of who he is to the point where he doesn't he doesn't remember anything of his past and so you know after that's all done Zari and Sally are separated from Jeff Jeff you know lands in a different area in Japan Sally lands in a backyard of a certain principal I'm gonna say right now it's Nezu and Lazari lands somewhere else in the city. And so, hold on. Oh, okay. So, where Jeff landed was in a dumpster. <laughs> and, you know, he's coming too. But he was, uh, where am I? Who am I? As this dumpster was full, as he's able to, you know, get out and land on his feet, he was, I, I don't. My head, my body, everything hurts. As this unknowingly changed Jeff. So about three weeks have passed since he entered the world of My Hero Academia. He's you know, scrounging for food. Fighting, well, not people, but fighting animals or villains sometimes. Small ones who don't know, but, you know, he, Jeff's able to, well, run away at these times. And so what happens is, on this day, this specific afternoon, though, a woman's walking by this alleyway, and she's, well, hurt. She's coming back from the hospital as she sees a boy. You know, kicking a trash can to the side as, you know, the lid was rolling to her as she sees it. She looks over and she sees a boy going for the trash. And she goes, oh, oh my, are you okay, little boy? As Jeff looks over and he, with basically a sandwich that is not expired. I was in a wrapper that was accidentally thrown away. As, you know, he basically opened it up and started eating it. As she goes... And he goes, mm. Mm, 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 mm. 
as you know, he has a pull in his face, and she goes, "Huh?" As then he goes, swallows, and he goes, "I said, stay away from me. I have a sandwich." As she starts laughing, he goes, "I, I mean it. I have a sandwich. I'm not afraid of you." Okay, I'm afraid to use it because this is my breakfast. And she goes, well, what do you mean? He goes, and she asks, where's your family? He goes, huh? Family? I don't remember. I don't even know my own name. So, uh, sorry, uh, miss. I, he bites in his sandwich and, you know, Inko just starts thinking. I, I don't have no one at the house anymore. So, she goes, how about I, you know, adopt you? Adopt me? She goes, mm, it's, I'm taking care of you. I treat you like my own son. And, well, I show you love and affection. As Jeff just shrugs and goes, eh, sure, why not? It's better to live on the streets. And so she goes, great. As they go to a orphanage just nearby, because she found one on her phone, and they get the papers and documents signed. And, well, yeah. So, this was when Jeff, well, Jeff is four. He's the same age as Bakugo in this one. And so, you know, he goes, he gets new clothing, takes a shower, learns the alphabet and stuff. Basically, he goes to, you know, kindergarten, meets Bakugo. He learns, learns about quirks. He becomes a quirk fanatic. Yes, yeah, so we're making him have some Deku traits. Well, he's, because it's new to him and, well, he likes it. And so, he, you know, basically, he says, I want to become a hero! You know, and all of that, because Inko, you know, treats him nice and all. And for some reason, though, there is still that tick inside of him. It's not gone. It's never gone. He's still a killer, no matter what. But anyways, well, so when he found out he had a quirk, Inko saw he was going to be devastated. Including this, including, you know, this doctor and canon. Which the doctor did try to steal his quirk, but he couldn't. <clears throat> Reasons why. Because of the lightning. They, it's still working, it's magic. <laughs> I wanted to say that for the longest time. But yeah, it's still affecting his body. It's taking the aspects of who he was before and still changing it. It's going to take about two years or so a little bit no a little bit of over a year so when he's five he's gonna get it hmm five to f yeah around five so you know he just shrugs he goes yeah doesn't matter to me as everyone's confused he goes all right mom let's go as inko and the doc well as the doctor says huh weird kid as in, he just said, as then Deku just, well, as Jeff just looks at him and goes like, and you got a weird mustache, so, I mean, really? It kind of looks like one of those things where you'd have a brush and you just, like, use it to clean someone off after getting at your haircut. Just want to say that, so don't call me weird. As Inko kind of laughs at this and the doctor's a little bit mad, but he kind of like, Agree, it does look a little bit weird. He 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 says, even though I I'm mad at you, I kind of agree with you on that, young man. He goes like, all right, come on, mom. I go, Inko, you know, says sorry about him, and they leave. And so, you know, everyone finds out he has no quirk. People start bullying him. The anger, the rage, the killer instinct in him is starting to come out. Hold on. But it's very slowly coming out. It's like when Baku, you know, being up a kid, is, well, Jeff just runs in, basically, and punches him in the face, which everyone shot as he gets in front of them and saying, Bullies, I always hate people like you. As he gets a flashback to, well, Randy and his friends, the two goons, as this just reminds him of him, you know, as he goes, Tch. as he thinks, just like Randy. And he goes, huh? Who? <laughs> Never mind. As Bug goes, oh, look, it's Deku. As he, you know, punches his fist in an explosion. And he goes, like, I'm just, you know, as he makes that sinister smile. He goes, I can't wait to beat you, you know, and put you in your place. 
as you know they say, right guys, let's go. As all three of them charge, and as Deku just runs, well, as Jeff just runs in and saying, "You cocky bat," you know, well, you, you, you cock, well, yeah, cocky bastard. Hold on. I am gonna technically curse in this one a little bit. Um, I'm about to go out to Wawa uh, uh, because my dad needs cigarettes, and I just want to go for the ride. So I'm not gonna bring my phone with me and record. But anyways, um, yeah, just want to let you guys know I am technically gonna curse in this one a little bit more than my usual ones. So be warned, this is not gonna be, you know, for your audience. Audience, I forgot to mention that. I just realized I should mention that. But well, use I'm gonna try to use words as I usually would. A little bit more curse in this one. In this what if series. At least try to keep it like ten curse words a video. <laughs> so yeah. But anyways, as Bakugo throws an explosion as then punches as Daniel well throws an explosion at Jeff. He dodges, he then throws a punch. Bakugo hits him straight in the nose. Hold on. All right, everyone, I'm back from Wawa. Got iced tea. Ate something real quick. I'm good. As I said, as Jeff punched Bako right in the face, gave him a right hook. As Bako basically was, sent, was not sent flying, was though taken aback by this. As the guy with wings came at Jeff. As Jeff was able to duck, grab the kid's arms. And somehow, in some way, was able to pull him down and, like, throw him into the earth, grab the fingers, and then run away. As Bako starts running after him, and then the other two guns follow. Which, well, there's a nearby, since there's a playground, there should be, like, monkey bars. As then, you know, Jeff just, like, climbs up them and starts to, you know, swing on them as Bako gets up there. And, well, what happened next is, surprise, Bako, as Jeff was able to come back around, well, he turns around and then swings himself over to Bako and kick him in the face and him flying off of the monkey bars, well, before he can even get on, and then... Right into the wing guy, and right when the guy, the kid with the stretchy fingers, basically tries to hit Izuku. I mean, Jeff with them, he basically dodges and grabs them, and well, I think their their bones are strong, but Jeff just snaps them easily. He breaks his fingers. As the kid's crying in pain, as Bakugo realizes, uh, we'll, we'll get you next time, you, 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 you Deku! As you know, he just runs away, as Jeff just grins and goes, <laughs> Run away! Run away like the little bugs you are! <laughs> ah, I'm gonna give me, have a lot of problems in the future, but hey, I'll deal with it somehow. As Inko saw what, you know, Jeff did, or should I just say Izuku, for right now, as, you know, they, she saw what he did, she, you know, the kid comes up and thanks him as, well, oh, you know, Inko comes over and he goes, uh, I'm in trouble. She goes, nope, that was a very nice thing you did. He goes, oh, really? Hmm? You know, she, she actually nods and goes, well, come on, time to go home. He goes, all right. So, we're doing this time skip to a year. That was like two, that was like three months later, but... A year later, basically. After Jeff, well, after Zuku turned five. Um, Inko was up, just... Cleaning, just doing some last minute cleaning before going to bed. It's like 12. And then Jeff, well, and Zuko wakes up to a 
a slam. A door was kicked open. Well, a door was slammed open. As in, like, four... Four men walk in. Well, one of them, like, these guys, these guys are villains. They have quirks, but not very useful ones. But hey, you know, as, you know, Inko's screaming, like, for help. Like, you know, just to le let her go. Like, don't do anything, please. Just stop. As, you know, Jeff goes, huh? Mom. As then he hears a man saying, shut it. I'll kill you. As in, he just suddenly that word kill triggers something in his mind. And so, right when, you know, when he walks out, he opens up the door. He's walking, and he's just starting to have, like, all the flashbacks he had. And he just has the biggest smile on his face as he goes, <laughs> Well, it looks like these dirtbags need to <laughs> go to sleep. As, you know, he says, hey, hey, dirtbags, aren't you listening to me? As you, no one hears well, Jeff's voice. As he goes, huh? What the? Nah, it's... Is this my quirk? I'm quirkless. Wait. The lightning hit me. Oh, sorry. Sally. <sighs> I should have been looking for them. In a year, as you know, he's just thinking about leaving Inko, you know, leaving Inko behind. And though he sees her, the fear in her eyes, he can tell, he just no, he can tell that every instinct in his body is telling him to leave her. But this is different. Something else is telling him to help her. Not to be a hero. Just help her by being you. As there is no kitchen knife even near him. As all of a sudden he feels a knife in his hand. As he just starts running. Nobody hears his feet. As in basically. He just let in madness and insanity take over as everything he can think of just pops into his head so what happens is he jumps onto the counter and they still don't notice and he just jumps right towards the guy as he then looks over and he sees it well, Dick, well Jeff just stabbing him like in the face Straight in the face, right? You know, as in... I should really put a 13 plus warning. Yeah, my content is third, nice kid-friendly. There's a lot. I mean, as then, like, the guys don't even, like, can not hear him. Like, no, no, they hear, but they just thinking he's just being dramatic, as in all of a sudden... Like, he just drops down as he had, like, 20, like, no, he had, like, five stab wounds in his face. As then, Jeff just stabs the guy right in the back. He falling down. As in, <laughs> slit throat. He had a pistol on him. Jeff just grabs it. Knife in left hand. Gun in right hand. The two guys look back. As they all these you see is, as, no, as one guy just hears bang and sees the kid. And before he could do anything, that guy gets shot right in the head, too. Two headshots. Four dead villains. As Jeff just says, <laughs> I had no time to say, tell them to go to sleep, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. 
as he does have a smile on his face, like, he's just smiling at this, he goes, a year without killing, it's good to have this feeling again, the satisfaction of, well, taking a life, <laughs> As he looks at Inko, says, What? Not gonna scream? As all of a sudden, she hugs him. And she's just saying, Thank you. Thank you, my, my sweet darling boy. Are you okay? As, you know, she's just checking him. And he goes, What? You're, you're, you're not scared? I, I killed these guys right in front of you. And you're not terrified? She goes, No. Why? As he goes, I, I'm a murderer. She goes, no, you're not. You saved me. He goes, no. I mean, I am legit a killer. I've killed before besides these guys. I mean, I lost my memory for a full-on year, but... I mean... I legit killed over... 27? No, 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 no. It has to be more than that. I've been living for about 125 years after that experiment from Slenderman's blood and all, from Dr. Smiley. Ugh. I couldn't pick a better name than that, but whatever. I shouldn't be talking. Uh, she goes, huh? He goes, besides the point. I killed over 2,000, no, 27,563 people. And they weren't always good. There were a lot, but most of them were a lot of innocent people. Including a small kid. May I add to, you know, may I add. And you're still saying, you're not terrified? And she goes, nope, not at all. And he goes, why? I don't say it's just because I'm your son. She goes, no, that's the reason why. You're my son. I love you no matter what. Even if you're a killer. A murderer. Um, something else. It doesn't matter. You are my son. But. Since. It looks like you remember your name now. Well, at least you know you have a name. What was it? You know, as Jeff just says, Jeffrey Woods. <laughs> you know, the f a famous killer that doesn't exist in this world. I mean, I don't belong here. Neither do my two little companions, but we don't. I don't know where they are, so I have to go out and look for them. So, I thought you were going to be scared of me and you didn't kick me out, but it looks like my plan that failed. So, there's another option, but I don't like to do that. She goes, kill me? Why not? If you said you, he goes, because you're my mother. And for once, I actually feel like I have a mom. I mean... When I went first time insane because of the meds and, well, pure insanity and relishing in my... Well, in the hospital, you, when you go through a lot of pain, being burned alive for the very first time, it doesn't go so well for you. Because of pain, medication... And, well, because of the pain that you went through with fire, you kind of just snapped until you get your sanity back. And you killed your family, your mother and father, because, well, your mom told that your dad to get the shotgun and try to kill you. And then you decide to kill your brother, Lou, who technically survived. I never regret killing my parents. I regret trying to kill my brother. Luckily, he survived. And I don't want to kill you since you're better than my original mom. You know, then my other, then my fucking mom that's dead. And I know, I swear, I'm sorry. 
Um, you know, but freaking mom, that's that. As she goes, really? And he goes, yeah. And he just literally says, what happened to you to make you so messed up in the head, Inko? And she goes, I'm your mother. Say mom. And he goes, yes, mom. And she goes, good. Now go back to your room and get some sleep. As he goes, what about the bodies? I mean, also, I kept on screaming, saying dirt bags, and they didn't hear me. I always sell them without a knife, and I felt a certain rush of power throughout my body. And she goes, oh, your quirk's activated. Well, your quirk activated. He goes, like, I'm quirkless from the doctor that said. She goes, hmm, yes, but I had a feeling that doctor tried something that wasn't good, and your quirk couldn't manifest at the age of four because you're a late bloomer. So, we go to the court doctor, um, probably somewhere called the cops, and they're going to be here, and they're going to take the bodies, and that's what happened. I'm just going to say, some vigilante came in and killed him. I don't know who it was. And I, and basically, we just talk about this later. Alright, Jeffrey? And he just says, um, can I still keep the name Adoria? She goes, of course. But we'll have your name changed to Jeffrey Woods. He goes, Jeff. Not, not, not Jeffrey Woods. I meant Jeffrey Midori. He goes, can I just keep the word Jeff? Not Jeffrey. Please. I hate that part. She goes, all right. He goes, okay. Well, um, I'll talk to you in the morning. And, uh, thanks for not being afraid of me. As all of a sudden he lets go and the knife had just disappeared. As he, she goes, what about, and he goes, what about the gun? She goes, I'll handle that as basically, he goes, okay, night mom. He just walking away like this never happened. So Inko makes a call to someone and well, the next, when Jeff wakes up in the morning, um, he comes out, everything's cleaned, the door's fixed, and there's a man in the room with papers. And he goes, ah, he must be the young man. He goes, yeah, I am. Who are you? He was like, oh, I'm here to, well, examine you and to give you, well, change your first name to something else. He goes, all right, um, where's my mom? She, she's in, you know, he looks over in the kitchen. He goes, ah, there you are. She basically goes, yep. Anyway, just sit down. Breakfast will be ready soon. As, you know, he goes down there. Uh, he goes, sits down right across from the man. He hands him the paper and says, just sign your name as, you know, how you want to be. Just your first name. All right. He goes, all right. So he just puts on Jeff Midoriya. Well, the man says, full name. We can't have it as Jeff. He goes, uh, fine. Why? As Ingo says, it'll be good to have your full name. He goes, uh, fine. And then he just puts on Jeffrey Midoriya. Well, he just put down just Jeffrey, and he goes, well, all right, that's all settled. Now then, as basically he puts out, he has a, he brings out a machine, miniature machine that's to see if Jeff will have quirks, you know, a quirk. As then, well, and he, he has some other tools and such, but yeah, that's besides the point. And so after a quick test and seeing about it, he does not have a double joint. He basically, you know, they found out he had more than, his quirk could have more than one property to it. To make it seem like where he has maybe five to six quirks. Just mash up into one. So. Hmm. I'm trying to think. How, does, how can he, you know, say it right? Yeah, whatever. As he goes, well, well then, Jeffrey, it looks like you may have five to six quirks, each one with its own characteristic and abilities. Well, as what Inko told me, you have a stealth quirk that silences everything around you. Well, basically, your feet, your the sound of your voice, everything. So. 
how we just call the cork silent? He goes, all right. And you have a knife cork. It allows you to summon out knives to your hand as your weapons. So we'll call that knives. A knife cork. You know, a knife cork. As then, well, there could be other two. We just have to figure that one out. As then he goes, well, I did feel a little bit weird. I've thought about how to end the guy's lives multiple times in multiple different ways. Plus then, I had a little bit of a superhuman speed and strength. As he goes, hmm. Tell me about your past life. Well, the life before this one. He goes, all right. So basically he tells them about everything. Inko, you know, finished breakfast. She hears it. She's basically shot. The man's horrified by him. He, but he, but then he says, well, then it became a job just to kill people. I mean, it wasn't that bad. I mean, teenagers, drug dealers, our people. Our people, he goes like, the people that you don't want to be as a woman, he says. And he goes, ah. And overall, just corruption. So, yeah. But a lot of it was a lot of innocent people. So, yeah. Yes. Uh, so, madness and insanity. Maybe. As he says, try to focus on something. He goes, on myself, right? He goes, yes. As, well, Jeff starts to bring out something. Insanity is basically a quirk that allows him to manipulate and use to see things differently. Along with stitching himself back together. Along with madness helps, but madness is also is basically he you know found out it increases his strength, and it does drive him to become a little bit more, well, when like he was in a fight. Every time he gets hurt or hit or something happens, he can go insane, go become mad, and basically lose himself in it. And then he does say, "Oh wait." I wonder if I still have the slender walk. He goes, huh? What's that? As then, you know, Jeff just says, oh, um, this. As all of a sudden, there's like a static hum in the air. And everyone, like, sees, like, static all of a sudden. And then Jeff just disappears. And he's right at the table. Right next to my front of his food. Eating it. And drinking. He goes, like, so, that's it. That's the slender walk. As, well, it was a teleportation. We'll call it Slin Walk. Really, Slin? Why not just Slender Walk? It's easier. Alright. Quirks are added now to your bio. Well, they just call it... <laughs> Supernat... We just call it Supernatural. He goes... Why? Because, well... People would think it's very weird to have a quirk like this. All right, Inko, good day. It's good to see you again. Oh, thank you for the coffee. She goes, you sure you don't want no breakfast? She goes, no, no, no. I don't need none. Bye. As you know, he leaves. As he goes, so, mom, uh, who was he? She just says, an old friend. He goes, all right. So, you want to hear more about my past? Or, not really. She goes, I'm very interested in it, so tell me. It's alright. So he goes into more detail about everything. And Inko is just astonished by this. And, you know, she's not freaking out over this. If you're freaking, why? Because she's best mom. So, yeah. And basically, we're doing a big time skip to, well, middle school. The end of it. Baco and Jeff never really got along. So, you know, like, they weren't friends in kindergarten. But he knows Baco's family. 
they know Jeff, but, you know, when he was a Zuku, Baku only knows, you know, Jeff's, like, appearance, not Mitsuki or father, or his father, I mean. So, yeah, it's like, he looks like Jeff the killer now. You know, the pale skin, the white, well, then the pale skin, the black hair, you know, well, the leathery, like, skin, the black hair, the eyes. The eyes are basically, uh, you know, they're not, like, burned away. He, he can, like, just not blink. He doesn't have to blink anymore, but he does it anyways. He even just has that slit smile now or something. He didn't never even cut him, cut himself like he did in the past. It's just there now. As people just wondering, what the heck happened to him? Teachers don't bother him. He's pretty smart. Um, he does have a fascination with quirks. He says, Intel's very good. Get to like analyze people. <laughs> Man, who knew this could be so much fun? As you know, that was like over the year. He changed, he wears white, mainly black and black pants, shoes, hoodies, and just regular shirt. And also, he killed lots of people after him, you know, him awakening his quirk quirks and his memories he killed a lot more people and all the villains have been terrified he left a message every time where he goes and he has never been caught no one can ever catch him he he, he literally does and well on the news you know, they have, like, reported over the years that, like, this person has saved these people's lives by killing this many people and such. And, like, they thank the person. They just say, he has a gray hood on. Um, you couldn't see much. Like, his eyes, it didn't look like he blinked at all. He has black hair and a, oh, I don't know. He had a mask over his face. He just appeared out of nowhere. And next thing you know, multiple guys are going down and. Yeah, that's all. So, yeah, basically. Um, we're going to say everything goes in canon with this one. He's becoming a UA because he needs to find Sally and Lazari. That is his only reason. Um, Inko has also been, well, okay with him going out at night and doing this. Like, he's been, his, you know, he has been not sleeping until the end of school, like, I mean, like, he does not sleep until, like, the weekend, he gets no sleep, he's up all night, and all day, he, you know, five days, this is, like, basically five days, that's his limit, he has to sleep, he basically sleeps all Sunday, Saturday, and Sunday night, wakes up in the morning, basically, Saturday, he wakes up, I mean, Saturday, he sleeps, and then Sunday, he wakes up, he hangs out with Inko, they go out, and boom. Like, you know, he sleeps the next day. I mean, he sleeps Saturday, Sunday night, and then boom, he just goes out. You know, to school, then do what he does. So, yeah. But anyways. So, everything goes to canon. Baco does his speech. Jeff, you know, they say, ah, Jeffrey Midoriya wants to go to UA. As in, you know, he says, you're, you're basically, your grades are very good. I mean, surprising, you know. Also, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you got into a hero course. As he just goes, yep, hero, that's me. As he thinks, no, I'm not, I'm a killer. As, I, you know, Baku wants to say something, the teacher stops him for anything. He says, sit down now, and basically, let's get this class started. So, at the end of the school day, Baku goes over to Jeff, he goes, oi, Deku. Don't even bother trying to get you away. You'll never. As then Deku just stop, puts his hand up, and he back goes, goes, huh? He goes, as then he puts up the middle finger at him. He goes, do you think I care what you say, Pomeranian? As you know, the his goons behind him, 
you know, looking at him, and then all of a sudden, Jeff has just this sinister smile, and he goes, try me, and let's see much how, how much blood it'll take before you die, as the two goons freaking out, as Baku goes, you're a villain, he goes, really, I'm the guy who has no quirk, and you're the one who with explosions trying to hurt me. So, who's really the villain here? You know, as he's walking away, as, you know, Ed Bloodless is, like, always on when with people he does not like. Also, he had found out that he had a slight resist. He had a very big fire resistance. It, he basically found out he had, like, a resistance to fire because of his other quirk, Tough Skin. So, he was like... Finally, no burn, burning alive. After that forest fire, oh, I stayed at a fireplace. I stayed away from fire for months. Ugh. So, Jeff, you know, was just walking the path that Deku would have, and Sludge Vision tried to take over his body. He goes, Hey, kid, give me your body. The number one hero's following me as Jeff just disappears with knives in his hand. As then all of a sudden, and he uses insanity to basically put in energy through his blades and tries to slash at the sludge villain, which it does. It goes right for the sludge villain, but also leaving a little bit of a burn because this is like pure insanity, which causes it to basically burn and, you know, burn him a little as he screams out of pain. As I call minutes pass as all my comes, he goes, I am here. Basically, as well, the sludge villain goes, is screaming out of pain as Jeff's just laughing. He goes, <laughs> Come on, did you say you wanted my body? Why are you screaming? I thought you couldn't feel pain with that sludge of yours. <laughs> you worthless scum. Gum of trash! As the sludge villain tries to get away from him. As he sees all my, he goes, Oh my, oh my, save me from this crazy kid! As, you know, Jeff just holding the knives that are covered with red energy. As, you know, it looks like a sword. As, oh my, says, Whoa, kid, calm down. You don't have to take this too far. You don't want to become like a villain. He goes, so, I'm supposed to let him take over my body and kill me? Wow, number one hero you are. As all of a sudden, the energy just disappears and his, the blade's just gone. He goes, as you know, Jeff just like, started to walk away. He goes, Oh my, you may be the number one hero, but your sense of justice is too flawed. Ugh. You had no backbone to kill anyone. As Jeff just walks away disgusted. Because all my and the sludge villain just look at each other. He goes, and they go like, "What the? F what?" As he goes, "Wow, kids nowadays, huh?" As all my goes, "I know." He goes, "I'm ready to go to jail." He goes, "Really?" He goes, "I want to get off the streets if that kid's on it." He goes, "All right." As you know, the sludge villain and all my just walk like all my basically says, you "Better keep this a secret." As and poof, sludge villain knows the secret. And about how All for One did it. And he goes, I hate All for One, so I'll keep your secret. He goes, why? He goes, because he's the one who turned me into this. Along with that freaking brat of his. What was his name? Tomura something? <sighs> Whatever. And so the sludge villain and All Might go to the, you know, the police station as basically him and All Might became somewhat friends. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we go back to Jeff. You know, he gets home. He goes, "Mom, I'm home." She goes, "Oh, honey, you know, are you gonna be going out tonight?" He goes, "Um, nah. We're we're, we're I'm gonna take a break for the night and celebrate with you. You know, spend some time with my mom." She goes, "You don't have to." He goes, "No, no, 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 no. I am. Uh, come on." I mean, I just fought a villain already, and he probably got arrested by All Might. She goes, you really don't like All Might, do you? He was like, no, no, there are a whole bunch of corrupt heroes. 
And I basically, you know how many people I've killed that are heroes that were corrupted? 25! I even freaking gathered information on them and placed it like. <sighs> Alright. Let, let me tell you how what happened. As then like Jeff tells her about how he basically killed this one hero that was well blackmailing like female like blackmailing females and males just to well males to basically try to get like in trouble with some girls like then he can come over and save them and then he can probably like just get something from them. And like even like their money, jewelry or whatever, just anything really from them. As then he was like, so I found that out, and I even found out that he was actually selling well drugs to kid, like teenagers. So I got him from I got all the information I need, snuck to the guy's house, and made him go to sleep. And basically, I placed evidence right in the guy's hand. And made it look like he killed himself. In which. It was on the news that day. Afterwards. As Inko goes. Yep. I figure as much from you. He goes. Well that was only one. And then there was like this one time. As he just goes on and on. He had about some cops that were corrupted. And doing exactly the same thing. But with make it look like it was just like all a freaking gunshot fire. So. She goes, so you really just made it look like all this, and no one has ever found it, found out? He goes, yep. Sometimes there's even unsolved cases of me now. Looks like I haven't lost my touch, my touch over the years. <laughs> uh, and, and Inko just smiles. She goes, I don't like you killing people, but it brings a lot of crime down over the city. So, I'm perfectly fine with it, she says. He goes, Over, after, after everything, you're still fine with me killing people. She goes, mm hmm. And he goes, Best mom, I'm not leaving this dimension. If someone has to force me, I am killing them and I am just staying here. She goes, Why? He goes, like, You're my mom. I don't want to leave. I love you too much. She goes, aww. And he, but then he says, but I'm incapable of loving anyone. It's hard. She goes, I know. That's why I have enough love for the both of us. As then he goes, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, basically, they just hang out, talk, chat, watch. He does his homework. They watch movies and such. And just basically just be like a father, like, not father, like, thought, like brother, not brother, uh, like, son, like, mother, you know, family and bonding. And so, for the next five months, he trains his body. He basically works on his insanity. He also has a technique called insanity rush. He basically found, he basically, you know, starts to increase his healing factor with his insanity to basically stitch them all back up if there's, like, multiple cuts, wounds on him and such just to heal him. Which is all of his insanity that he has within his mind or you know, in general. He basically can use it to heal himself. So, which which is always insane, so there's a lot. So, yeah. So. Mm. So, afterwards. So, after the 10 months are over. The whole, You know, the. Basically, the UA exam, entrance exam, happens. He's got everything ready. He's hype. He's just wearing his normal outfit. Um, he did get some piercings, too. And he was just like, I don't care. Like, he, he doesn't, like, have his own... He ha doesn't have a haircut. So he just has this, like... His hair in a man, like in a ponytail, man bun, whatever, just to like, get it, it out of his face. Inko basically wished him luck already. Um, she even texted him saying, "Just remember, don't go overboard, 
And don't kill no one if they piss you off, she says. He goes, yeah, mom, I promise. So, you know, he walks in. He doesn't trip. He never meets a Araka. Um, you know, Ida basically looks at him. He goes, like, you know, even see his face. And he goes, are you all right? As then he goes, yeah, four eyes. I'm fine. As then next, you know, all of a sudden, he just having, like, something, a bottle in his hand, which he was like, uh, what's that? He goes, it's none of your business, four eyes. And he's just walking away. As he goes, that, that almost looks similar to alcohol. As basically, you know, right when Jeff gets in, he goes like, ah, done already. Uh, that's all right with the iced tea. As, well, it was iced tea. You know, just thought it was alcohol because the bottle. Jeff uses, re Jeff recycles everything. <laughs> he reuses stuff. So, I mean, he does drink in this one. Not gonna lie, he does drink. Um, his body is naturally used to it. And, well, since he became back to his old self, as soon he knows as soon as he hits the age where his body, I mean, where he was already stopped growing, he's gonna technically be immortal again. So it's like, hey, he doesn't care. Also, he can't get, he really can't tr get drunk anymore. He finds out that that healing factor of his doesn't allow him to get drunk. He hates it, but he likes it. So yeah. So basically, I, he basically aces the exam. He studied. He basically remembered a lot of stuff. So yeah, and then uh, the whole entire thing with I with President Mike happens. Baco sees Jeff. He doesn't like it. And, well, what happens? Uh, Ida does exactly the same thing. Jeff hasn't killed her intent on him, which Ida shuts it, sits down. Then the whole entire thing is saying, but the obstacle happens, so yeah. So, um, when everything's about to start for, well, when everyone gets to their areas of zones, you know, um, Jeff is with Araka and Ida again, so Ida comes over to him and asks him, did you feel that tense you know, blood doesn't kill her tent? He goes, no, just imagine it, four eyes. Just, and he just walks away. Which, he goes, why does he keep calling me four eyes? Whatever, he just says, I gotta focus on my, you know, on this. As Jeff just, at, well, just walks over, he sees Araka. He goes, huh, she looks nervous. Not my problem. As you know, Uraraka comes over to him and goes, Hi, I'm a Chaco Uraraka. And he goes, And I'm the boogeyman. As you know, she looks him weirdly. He goes, like, Not even a smile? Jeez, tough crowd. And she goes, Sorry, I just. Is your name really the boogeyman? He goes, No, my name is Jeffrey Midoriya. She goes, Huh? He goes, English name I know. Also, he learned Japanese, don't worry. Like, his body was already naturally able to speak, and he actually could understand Japanese already, so. Yeah. But anyways. He just says, You nervous? She goes, Mm-hmm. You? He goes, Not really. This is simple. Simple warm-up before the real thing. She goes, What do you mean? He goes, like, Come on, there has to be more than robots. If they are, then this was a way disappointment. I mean, I thought it was going to be, like, actual heroes we could fight. I mean, well, baby to the death. As he then has a grin on this, as she goes, uh, to the death would be too much. He goes, like, why? I mean, if we become heroes, we're going to die. So, better live life while we can, right? She goes, yeah. And so, the gates open up. He goes, like, well, uh, see ya. As then all of a sudden he uses his madness on himself and his yeah basically which turn make his eyes like look different and she goes what the as then he just runs he basically then summons out his blades coats them in insanity and just starts like, slashing all of them which but slashing the robots that come at him which people are surprised because in a matter of minutes he already has. Mm, 25 points.
in which everyone was shocked. So, right around the end of it, uh, near the end, say like 10 minutes left, they decided to rent the zero pointer. And, well, everyone runs away. Jeff doesn't really care. Not even about Araka, but he goes, <sighs> All right. Because I was taught by the I was taught by the right person about this. So he just starts running towards her Araka at top speed, grabs the rubble, throws it off of her, get her away, and then basically he goes Well this is gonna be fun. And he sees the robot. He tells her, can she walk? She goes, no. He goes, fight the robot or save the damsel in distress. He goes, eh, save her, then kill it. So basically, he gets, he basically picks her up and just starts running. And uh, he drops her and basically he goes like, now then. Two blades come out and he goes, let's do this thing. And so, that's what happens. Like, he's, he destroys the robot, like, pretty much. In the most brutal and craziest way ever. So yeah. So basically after that was done. He decides to pay a visit to somebody. This is where he thinks. Hmm. Should I get payback on Bakugo? Yeah why not. So basically he. you know, Dick, I mean, So basically Jeff walks over to. Bako's house. Mitsuki's there by herself. He asks if he can come in. And, well, two hours later, he gets out. You guys can use your imagination. So, you know. Jeff takes a different way. Bako comes over. He goes, hey, ma. Oh, he basically says, you know, what he would in canon. And then she doesn't hear him. She's basically sleeping. And, well, there are two the people who have been bullying him all his life along with Bako. Same thing happens. So, yeah. And then, you know, he comes home. It's like freaking 5 o'clock, she asks. What Inko just says. So, you are busy? He was like, yeah, I was. And I kind of like what I did, but hey. Just know, I was bullied, and I got revenge on them. She Then, like, she's, like, she was basically in, just reading a paper, as then all of a sudden, he hears a ripping sound, and she goes, you were bullied, you never told me? He was, like, it was nothing, I told you I was already bullied before. She goes, well, did you, you know, hurt them or anyway? He was, like, no, I did something better than, you know, better than that. She was really like, mm, you'll just have to find out. So, yeah. So, after that. Oof. Man, okay, I'm sorry, I'm tired. No. Oh. So, after that, five days pass. Message comes in from Nezu. Tells him he was able to pass along with the. Look at this. Passing the test along the strength, which surprised everyone with the most points. Alright. So, yeah. Alright. Hold on. Hold on. And so, um, before the message, like, you know, changes. Nezu comes up, he goes like, oh, you must be Jeffrey, you know, Jeffrey Midoriya. I heard a lot about you. Even the description matches of you, Jeffrey Woods. Hmm. As he goes, as basically, De you know, as basically Jeff goes like, how does he, and then he goes, you've been looking for someone, haven't you? Also, I know your killing pattern because of her. And then she goes, can I say something to Jeff? As he goes, Sally? As you know, Sally appears. She goes, Hi, Jeff. I miss you. You know, basically, she just says, Mr. Nesu has been taking care of me all this time. And, you know, she really wants to see him again and such. And, well, he just... 
just starts to really be happy. And so, you know, Nezu just says he's been taking care of her all this time, keeping her away from villains and such, making sure she always had someone to play with and just being there for her. You know, and uh, he's willing to, well, since he has been keeping an eye on him after hearing about him and the killings happened, it was very difficult to find out who he was. But since the whole entire thing, I mean, since the whole entire killing thing happened, it's been, you know, quite an experience that you haven't not done it in like 10 months. And he was, huh, wow, I forgot. Like my mind, my uh, my body is telling me to go to bed, but I don't want to. So yeah, so he knows Sally's all right, and that they're gonna. He wants to meet up with him the day before, and that's it. Yeah, that's all that Elf said, and the little thing explodes, leaving a little puff of smoke, as he goes. All right. And so, um, Inko's proud of him. He's proud and such. And so, that day fourth, um, Jeff, you know, got to UA. And I really want to continue with this, but I'm just so tired. I'm starting to fall asleep now, so. Yeah, alright. All right. I'll make a second part to this right away. When I after I get some sleep I think. So yeah. Alright. Leave let me know if you guys want part two or just like a redo of this. Alright. Alright. Um bye.